Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So what are we working on? We are working on Elvin's bike. Yes, we're going to be putting the clutch system together today. Find out what bolts are missing, what screws are missing. And because when he gave it to me, this was already a part. So we're going to see what's missing, what needs to be put together, how it has to go back together. And, uh, and then we're going to assemble it. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that um, I noticed right off the bat with the bike. And um, what we have to do. So anyway, um, before I continue, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. And thank you to all my old subscribers, obviously. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And you're going to be seeing a bunch of, a bunch of videos. Um, we have Alvin's bike. We have Robert's bike, and uh, this bike was before Robert's, so I'm trying to get this bike done. I have a couple of bikes that were before Robert's, and um, I'm just trying to get everything wrapped up. So I need to wrap up six bikes in three weeks. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big project, and um, well, when you see what's happening after the bikes are all gone, you'll totally understand why, and you're going to like it. So I just want to, um, you know put that out there and uh, we're gonna be working on Nick's bike too not today uh, Nick is gonna come up he's actually uh, just south of me and this is his uh, TS 125 uh, this was here while I haven't shot the I, I shot the first look video I just haven't posted it so you'll be seeing that bike as well but um, we have this bike the 175 and we're gonna do this one and this one blah 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 these two right here today and tomorrow and then we're working exclusively on robert's bike and getting that done so um we have that and then you're gonna see some fluff videos in the middle um working on some stuff so like i said we got about three weeks i gotta get all these bikes done and gone so uh yeah it's all <laughs> it's gonna be a hectic uh three weeks so bear with me on those um we got some great stuff coming up and um well you're gonna be seeing you're gonna be seeing a lot more videos from me um, in the near future. So um, hopefully that get, you get excited about that. And also want to show you something else. Check out my cool, awesome, super clean banner. Um, super clean has reached out to me and asked me if I could, uh, you know, just give them a shout out and talk about some product that I use on the channel. And I do have some product that we're gonna be using on the channel. In fact. We're going to be using some of that product on this bike. So we'll be uh, towards the end of that. After it's all put together and all set up, um, we'll be doing that. So I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the uh, people over at Super Clean. Thank you for making such a great product. And obviously, I'm going to show you guys something with Super Clean that even the Super Clean people don't know Super Clean can do. So. <laughs> all right and before we get going once again please hit that subscribe button the bell icon so when i post a video you get it and um don't forget to give a thumbs up that helps us move us higher in the algorithms and it's really really appreciated don't forget to comment if you guys have any questions by all means please feel free to do it i am working on the ground and i am old so first thing we're going to do is grab one of these foam pads to protect our knees um, Snap-on makes them, Mac makes them. Don't spend that kind of crazy money on something that is just a piece of foam. Um, you can get this right here over at, uh, what do you call it, they get them at the dollar store. They have them over at uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, everywhere. Everywhere that has a garden has a, has a knee mat. Uh, knee mat. Um, so it's very important to do that because when you get as old as I do, I am, you'll uh, hurt your knees. So you don't want that. And they're comfortable. So, all right. So, I'm looking at the bike and seeing... This is actually the second time I've looked at this particular side of the bike um, when we were working on it. So, this is the clutch uh, cable assembly, which runs up underneath the bike, up the frame tube to right here. See that tube right there, and that fits inside there. And that's for the clutch. Okay. And now, what we have to do is that bolts onto the bottom part of the cover here. And it's kind of like a Yamaha system, where it's got the push rod right here that pushes in and uh, activates the clutch on the other side. Not like the KE100s. Then there is this wire right here, this dangly little wire. And you're probably saying, yeah, my bike is doing that too. It's just dangling there. What is that wire for? Oh, I'm going to show you what that wire is for. So up on the gauges, 
there is a neutral light. That is for that indicator. When the bike is in neutral, that comes on. So what happened? Where does that sensor go? How come I can't plug it in? There's nothing to plug it into. It actually goes into this plug right here. So where this plug is right here, there's supposed to be a sensor there and that plugs into it. I unfortunately do not have that sensor. But um, I will keep an eye open for one. And then if we do find one, um, we can then go ahead and take that plug out. It screws into there. And if you want to really see what that looks like, you can go check out my Yamaha GT80. Um, I'm actually almost certain they use the same plug. So I got to check that out. Because if so, I might have one kicking around. If it doesn't, and it's a KE um, 7, uh, 125 exclusive, I don't. So, um, there's that. And then we have the oil pump on the same side right here. Just like the Suzuki um, DS100, the DS80. So, there's a lot of, you see where this is going? There's a lot of common stuff here. The pump, system, the head, the cylinder... All of this is a reminisce of a, um, or very close to, not the same, but very close to a Suzuki um, DS80. Unfortunately, the clutch is on the other side, so it doesn't use that type of push rod. So this is more of a Yamaha style, if you if you will, on these bikes. That's more of a Suzuki style. And yeah, so you guys get where I'm going with this. Let me get you guys in the stand. We'll get crack a lacking and um, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm trying to find all the screws that match. I found a few of them. I need to find one more for right down here, but I also um, noticed these are the screws that he supplied with it, and this one had a nut on the end, and I was looking at it, and this screw right here is stripped out. So what I'm going to do, as opposed to putting a one screw in and one bolt in, um, what I like to do is I like things to match. So I'm going to use two of the same bolts and nuts on that side to hold the clutch mechanism on. And then the rest will be all screws. I think that would be the better way of going. It will look nicer and more professional. So this screw right here just holds the um, chain cover to the magneto cover. And then we can then go ahead and bolt that up. I was looking to see if I had a neutral safety switch. I do not have a neutral safety switch for this bike. Um, so that's something he's going to have to locate. What they did, it must have broke. It, they probably, what probably happened, and this is a common thing, the chain comes off and then takes out that sensor. Um, so I'm sure that's what happened. And then what they did was they just put a bolt in there to uh, eliminate it. So that's chances are that's what they did to that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get you guys in the stand and we're going to start putting this piece in this thing back together. Now, how do you know you got the right size screws in there? Because they all come down about the same length. See how, how uh, much they're hanging down? If you can see that, not to focus. But they're all at the same length. Okay, so that is how I know I have all the, the correct screws on there. So now you're probably at your house going, Kevin, I have a basket case. Oh my God, I don't know what screw goes where and blah, blah, blah. Well, this is why you watch this channel. I'm going to show you. Okay, so what I have done was I measured out all the screws to hold it on, except for I didn't measure out that screw and these two yet. So I'm going to show you what I got right now for this one, this one, this one, and that one right there. So if you're looking at the cover, I'm just going to, I'm going to hold this here for a second so you guys can see. Three quarter, 19 millimeter, one and an eighth, 28 millimeter. That's not a part, it's just a 28 millimeter. And then right here, a one and nine sixteenths, so 39 millimeters. And then one and three eighths, 35 millimeters. That is the, uh, what do you call it there, the measurement of the bolts. So when you're trying to measure out your bolts to, um, what you call it there, put this all together. Now you know, and also want to show you guys something else. This um, KE125 uh, is a six speed. Pretty cool, huh? One down, neutral, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a six speed. Pretty cool. 
he's gonna have himself a great bike so i measured it out for you so now you can just take a measuring tape or however you guys want to measure it and um what do you call it there determine what bolts go where and now you know so if you have a basket case you're welcome before i go into that i'm just gonna do this one more time i did measure out that bolt right there that too is three quarter 19 millimeters so now you have all those except for the two bottom ones which i have to determine what that is at the present moment so let's go get crack a lacking all right so one of the first things we're going to do before we put anything on the side here we have to prep it so in order to prep it what do we have to do we have to check that back um the oil pump and make sure that the, the uh, alignment marks are in the correct spot so let's do that right now real quick and let me just flash right up in there if you can see that or not there's an alignment mark right there and they are spot on so i'm looking right here on the right on that little bank and they look like they are spot on to me i'm pretty happy with that there's oil in the line everything looks good okay so with that said now what i'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on it. So there's a cover that I have to fish into there. And I have to put that on. So let me get you guys in the stand. And we'll zap that on real quick. Okay. So it was missing one of these screws. He had one. I have another. So um, these right here are uh, we call half inch 13 millimeter screws. You know lengthwise. And then we're going to take his cover. And kind of fish it in there. This could be a little pain in the neck with the uh, chain on it. But um, we'll get it. Okay, yep. Here we go. You know, we can drop it that way too. Oh, actually, it wasn't that bad. Go that route. Okay, and then start your screw. Always verify that your, um, what do you call it, the clutch is going in, your, um, what do you call it, the, your oil pump is going in the right direction. Okay, now that's on there. All right, oil pump is covers on, and we don't have to worry about that. Now, what I'm going to do is this wire right here. This is a neutral safety wire. We're going to take this. We're going to bring it up around here. He's going to have to get locate a uh, sensor for that if he wants that light to work. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. I'm going to take zip tie with the end facing down. Just going to get tucked up in there like that. that facing down like so. Then I'm just going to trip, the, trim, cut that, trim it, whatever you want to call it. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the shifter, which is even loose. Um, we're going to take this off, and uh, what do you call it? The, uh, that bolt was kind of tight. And I'm going to show you guys how to fix a loose shifter. You're going to love this one. We're not doing it at the moment. We're going to get the cover on. Just want to button up the side today. Screwdriver right there, use my mallet. When I'm doing with the screwdriver, I'm actually tapping it on the back side with a mallet and I'm expanding it so it can get over the burr. And then you work it back and forth, and out she comes. Now it's all set. Now, what we're going to do is before we put this together, we're going to wash this thing, but I want to prep it so. What I'm going to do is, when up, I don't have a gasket for here. And this thing requires a gasket. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you guys the proper way. Because I've been asked this a lot. Kevin, can't you just silicone it? You can. Alvin's going to have to buy a new sensor. So when he buys a sensor, he's going to have to buy a gasket kit. Because he needs a gasket for the other side as well. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to silicone. And I'm going to show you guys the proper way of doing this. Now, is this a permanent fix? Yes. 
you can absolutely use this. Um, one of the things that uh, I prefer is a gasket because it looks nicer, but there are some imperfections. You can't really see them right here because the shield's in the way, but there are some imperfections in the metal. So if there is imperfections in the in the casing, like any pitting or any of that type of stuff, you can literally use silicone and it's better than a gasket. If the gasket surface is smooth, go ahead and use a gasket. But in this case where he's got a little bit of pitting and it looks like like you can see right here someone someone beat this thing. It, it was it wasn't taken apart properly, not by Alvin, but whoever he got the bike from. Um, clearly did some hackery to it, like with this right here. You can see, so I'll see if I can zoom in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. See right here on the flywheel where they, they went a little Hannibal Lecter on it with a uh, screwdriver, probably tried to get it apart, and you can break a magnet doing that. So, um, you know, some things to look out for, you know, but... I think he's all right in this case. I think he just needs, uh, we're going to use silicone as opposed to a gasket only because of the pitting. So let me go get the silicone and then we're also going to um, spray some stuff on this side over here to break it up before we pressure wash it. Kevin, what RTD silicone do I buy? Do I buy clear silicone? Do I buy that Honda Bond that you use? Do I use the orange RTV silicone? Which silicones do I use? Do I use the black? Do I use the silver, the gray? There's so many different ones. This right here is really not going to matter. You can either use the Permatex. And I swear, but I'm not, I am no, I'm not associated in any way, shape, or form with Permatex. But Permatex, if you listen to me, I'm giving you props here, okay? So let's uh, work on a deal. But, um... Permatex I have been using for over 35 years, okay? Uh, I've been using this stuff when I was a kid. I used this on projects before I was even a mechanic. That's how long I've been using Permatex for. So, this stuff is amazing. I have fixed, oh, let me explain to you. I have fixed video game cartridges with silicone that had like chips and stuff in them. And I filled them in because they didn't want any dirt, debris to get into them. So, this stuff is amazing, okay? Um... When I'm working on bikes and I'm splitting cases, I use Honda Bond because I love the stuff. It's really great stuff, and it's thin. It, it's it's really really thin, and that's what I like about it. It's a thin coat. It's nothing crazy. So that's what we're going to be using. Now, on to treat all this stuff over here, we're going to be using a product from Super Clean, and this right here is the new stuff. This is an Easy Spray aerosol can of. The grease, so the stuff is amazing. Dissolves grease, super easy, super fast. Okay, tough task, clean degreaser. This is what I use. Now, they sent me up some products of this, and you are going to have a chance yourselves to get some of your own product. And I'm going to explain that in one of my videos, not this video, but we're going to be doing a giveaway working with Super Clean. So, something cool to, uh, what do you call it there, to work on. And I've been using the Super Clean stuff, and I love it. So, all right, we have a Cats 22 here. I can't get or I can't get this on where I'm going to silicone, but I need to spray this before I silicone so I can prep the surface. So when I'm doing it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it real quick, and then I'm going to walk away and let it dry, and then this is going to break up a lot of it. When by the time I hit it with the pressure washer, it's going to be all set. Look at that, huh? Okay, just like that, I'll get a rag. I'll clean up my area there. I just want this to uh, get in. Look at how it foams up, guys. Huh? Ain't that crazy? All right, so I'm going to pause you for a few minutes. I'm going to go take a break, and I'll be back. All right, so now we're at the point where we can cone and stick. So before we do that, we're going to do a loose fit. Make sure it's all good. I popped all the screws out of the case cover. And I'm just going to see how it fits on and make sure it's all kosher. Because see right here with the wiring goes through that little hole there. i got to make sure it's all good. So, alright. So that top screw, here's, this is why I do what I do. So, the top screw, he only supplied one screw. 
that's because the cover holds on the top one. So that screw that I put on there, I can take back out because it's not needed. It's held in with that top cover screw. All right, so this, why did I put on? It has to go down that way, so it's out of the way. And then this is gonna go through that little groove right there, the wiring. And we also have to line up the plunger right here, that's for the clutch, that goes into the center part. All right, so now, with all that like that, that's going to fit like so. Tug that all in, and that's how it's going to look when it's all on the bike. And then the clutch will go down underneath, and we'll put that on next after we get the, done this part. All right, so the next step is to figure out how this clutch goes. Do we put it on before, or do we put it on after? Remember, we didn't take this apart. We're just kind of piecing it back together. So that's why it was supplied one screw. One screw wasn't missing. And this goes on the top part there. Okay, so it looks like it goes over it. So I think it would probably be better in our best interest to take off this bottom bolt and these two underneath till oh, it's actually missing one to remove this cover when we go to do the clutch. This will give us more room. So we'll take off one motor mount bolt and the two bolts. Uh, this is missing one. We'll remove this cover, then we get to this whole mechanism easily and i bet you one of those other screws apply for that all right so now let's get this thing siliconed and put on thought i was recording i siliconed it stuck the case on with only one screw and i'm using the honda bond which is my favorite silicone to use in this case i only put that screw in so now i'm going to zap in all the other ones and i'm not tightening them until they're all on all right so now, take this top one on here. I'm just kind of setting them in until they're all into place. Now I'll tighten them up. Okay, and now those are on there. Next step we have to do is get the clutch, um, what do you call it there, all set up on there. And in order to do that, we have to remove that bottom inspection pan because this clutch mechanism right here doesn't give us much much room to work with. So let me go get the proper tools and take off that bolt, uh, the motor the motor mount bolt and the two screws underneath. All right, we just had a massive storm come through here. It's crazy. So I did a couple of things um, off camera, and I'm going to show you guys what they are because some of the stuff you can't see, some of the stuff is technical. So um, when I say technical, I'm going to show it to you. I just can't show it to you in its natural habitat. I'm going to show it to you outside the bike. And I was wrong. So I'm going to start off with being wrong. I'll start that part right now, and I'll show you. Okay, so... The bottom part right here is not stripped out. It actually threads into the other part of the block. So see how it's got the ears right here? So that's what that right there is not stripped out. That side. And then this side right here also threads into the back side that's got threads. So there was no nut on that. I don't know where that nut goes. I'm going to have to find that out. I think I have an idea where it came from though. Okay. So now I want to show you this right here. There's a, a one inch and then there's like a one and a quarter. Okay, so um, the shorter one right here, which is the, I'm sorry, three quarter and then an inch and a quarter go right here. The long one in the back, the short one in the front, they are different. Okay, so I had already hooked up the clutch mechanism, the back there, which I'm going to show you guys that that's the part off camera um, that I did. And I'll show you guys how to properly connect that. Okay, so this is all going to screw in nicely. So let me get you guys in the stand so I can show you that. I'm going to tighten up these two screws real quick, and I'll be right back. All right. So underneath on the bike, on the clutch mechanism, it looks like this type of clasp. 
okay and then you have this style cable now these don't go to this bike this is a ke 100 style but this end piece is literally the same as on here all right so i want you guys to see how this is connected so up in here there's a spring you're gonna pull your spring back so you just see this part right here okay which is going to focus and then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and slide it in to the groove into the hole and it, it can't come out and then you see on this side this little tab well if you if your bike is original you would have had to bend that tab to get that out which is what that's for that's a bend tab so you're going to bend that tab in like that so it can't come out see how it's bent in and now it's holding that cable from pushing through so you're going to want to make sure you bend that tab a lot of people don't even know that tab is there uh, it's very important you do that because that right there is going to take the slack out of the, out of the uh, cable and then to release the cable you just bend the tab back with a screwdriver so it's back up to flat and then you can slide your cable your um, cable in and then out boom just like that all right, so I wanted to show you that because that's what I had to do underneath But there was physically no way I can get you guys underneath there to uh, visualize How that all goes together. So I figured I'd show you outside of a bike with another cable and another adjuster Okay, so now I got the clutch all set up um, All on it. I do have to do a clutch adjustment to it But um, what do you call it there? There is absolutely zero free play on it that clutch is tight it feels good i can feel the clutch when i pull it moving in and out so we're going to go ahead and do a clutch adjustment on this and i'll show you guys how all that is done and then um after we get done doing that well we'll be done this side of the bike and i do um remember i told you underneath that bracket only had one screw in there and it was missing the other one well that's because someone took it apart and you can see how they broke they broke the bolt so we're going to try to extract that real quick and uh let me go get something i can try to do that with you always want to make sure you remove the broken bolt and replace it with a new one and in some cases this one's all covered with oil because of a leak it might have had at one time but um if yours is all rusted remove it if you have to Drill it out and put a nut and bolt through it and I'll tell you why because this right here will is right up against the frame It'll be a ting, 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 and you really don't want to hear that when you're riding the bike Excusing a pair of ice grips It's not moving Let's see if we can Loosen that up A little bit of strength, guys. There we go. Yeah. No need to drill, no need to tap. Just got to replace the broken bolt. If they're all that easy, right? Okay. Had that been all rusted, that one that came out that easy. So, and being a New England bike, definitely wouldn't have. Okay. So, right now we have this side of the bike almost complete. I just have to put the pan back on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Find another uh, bolt and um, get that all tightened back up. And then um, we'll start working on the clutch adjustment. All right. So now we're going to do the clutch adjustment on this side. And you can see right here, I have no... I have to really push on with my thumb to get any type of free play. And that's with the adjuster all the way in, which is how it should be. And the typically what I do is I adjust this one all the way in. Um, sorry about the extreme close up there. I adjust this one all the way in, make sure the cable's in there, and then do the same thing with this one. This one right here was already in, so I didn't touch it. Um, so a little rule of thumb if this is already in and the clutch is already this tight, that means that the cable is not really stretched, which is a good sign. Okay, um, it looks like someone was in here before. You can see a couple of Mars. But I'm going to show you guys how to take that cover off, 
without marring it up. Okay, what is a mar? It's like these little scratch marks. It, it's like they took a, a, a small blade screwdriver, a, well, a little smaller than this one, apparently. But, you know, and they try taking off with this and see how there's all that slop. I'm going to show you guys a little tech tip that's going to keep that from looking damaged. And you're going to love this. Okay, let me get you guys in the stand. All right, so one of the things you can do is Craftsman makes this little screwdriver. It's an up screwdriver with a pretty wide head. You can use that one right there. It will give you some uh, some leverage. Or you can use a tire iron for a car. Use the flat part of it. But here's what I like to do. I like to take a fender washer and take it off with a fender washer. If they're um, hand tight, you can do that, but most of the time they're not. So what I do is I take a pair of ice grips. I stick the uh, fender washer in the ice grips. Just clamp it down. doesn't have to be on there super tight. There we go. It's like that. And I put this in here like this. See how much area it takes? Just show you that real quick. See? It takes up almost the entire thing with a fender wash. You can use a regular washer too as long as it's big. And then give it a turn. You can also use a quarter too. But see? See the groove? How much nicer that fits into it? That's why it's actually curved. You see the curvature in it? You're actually filling up the whole thing to get that that torque. All right, and then here is your adjuster. Let's throw some light on the subject, shall we? Here we go. Let's see if I can get this to stay up. All right, so take a 10 millimeter. Oh, my ratchet, there we go. Holy crap. Okay. Wow, okay, that was a little too tight. That just needs to be snug. I had the gorilla loosen that. All right, now I still have no. So when I squeeze the trick, when I squeeze the uh, handle, you can see it move in and out. Let me blow you up a little bit there. There we go. And you can see the mechanism moving in and out. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get an eighth of an inch of free play. So what we're going to do is I got my hand, um, I'll just kind of, hold on a second. So what I'm doing is up top here, I got my hand on the, um, the clutch lever. And I'm just kind of going back and forth a little bit with my thumb, just like that. And then down bottom, I'm just going to back this out with the screwdriver. The one that fits in there first, there we go, until I keep it a little bit of pressure with my thumb on the, uh, the lever until I'm happy with my eighth inch of play. Okay. And see how the mechanism moves? Oh yeah, that feels good. Okay, I got an eighth inch of play right there. Taking the slack out. definitely need to have a little bit of play I'm going back and forth a few times with it okay just to kind of free it all up because when you adjust when you're adjusting these what ends up happening is the cables tight it might be stuck on something like uh, grease or hardened grease in, inside the tube so by working it back and forth you're kind of just moving the mechanism. You're freeing up the plates. You're just kind of moving it around. And then I do that about, I don't know, six to eight times. The more you do it, the better. And then check your free play again. I got good free play. Let me show you what that looks like. So this, here we go, right there. So the free play is going to be right here. And you can see I got my... My eighth of an inch, right there. Okay. And then I, I can move this with one thumb. So this is a good clutch. Okay. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this up. 
Now, obviously, it's set back that you can't put a socket on because then the screw will move. So I'm going to use my 10 millimeter wrench here, open end, boxed, right there. I'm going to put the screwdriver in the center to hold it, and I'm just going to snug it up. Just like that. And then, I'm going to try, see if I can put this on here, just give it a little... Like that, and then I'm gonna check my free play again. Beautiful. I got perfect free play. I'm doing the free play. Oh, where's the handle? Right there. Perfect. I can move with one hand. That's a good feeling right there. All right, and then plug. So. These plugs can be a pain in the neck to put back on. They also cross thread very easy. So this next tip is gonna help you out dramatically. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put this on and we're gonna go backwards. So watch, I'll show you like that. Then you're gonna see it snap in, go backwards. So it gets into its spot. Right there, do you see it drop in? And then, when it drops in, then you tighten it. Then you use your uh, trusty uh, washer. That's it, done. That's it for this side. So, I didn't put the um, hose clamp on that yet. I gotta do that, because he's got a leaky pet cock. So, I have to do that, but that's not a big deal right now. I just wanted to get this side right here all buttoned up. And now, we got a good clutch feels great everything's good on this side so for missing broken screws all that has been addressed it's got all the correct screws all the way around for that cover the broken bolt that was up underneath is now extracted and fixed we have all the wiring done except for the neutral safety switch which he's going to have to get a sensor for so I'm going to write that down. He's going to have to get a couple parts. Because right now parts are very hard to come by. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have been having a, having the same thing. I ordered an air filter for this thing a while ago. And it still hasn't come in. So Elvin's going to have to get that. Um, he's going to have to get his air filter. And uh, a couple of gaskets. The magneto, the carb cover gasket. And the air filter. And of course the, um, the neutral safety light. But that's easy enough to do. Um, I mean this bike guys this thing is in pristine condition for its for its age for its year. I mean It's awesome. Also too. I know if you, I don't know if you guys notice or not the bike is almost Straight up. It's still leaning towards me, but I use an automotive jack stand because I Have to I had to lead off the um, the kickstand because The kickstand all the way down the bike would be too much of an angle for even the video so I stick a kickstand, right, a um, what do you call it, jack stand underneath the peg in the back. Holds it up great. That's also good if you're going to store the bike too. It takes the uh, the weight off the tire and it'll allow you to, uh, off the suspension rather, and allow you to um, put the bike away a little easier. So, pretty neat. You can also use two jack stands if you want and change the back tire. Get the whole bike straight up in there right off the, uh, right off the ground. So, anyway guys, I'm going to end the video right there. I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hanging out with me. Oh, and th thank you for letting me uh, work on your bike. Super cool bike. And then tomorrow we'll button up the uh, carburetor side. Um, or maybe even, I might even do that later on tonight. I don't know. Um, realistically, we just have one cover right there. We got a silicone and put the two bolts in it and it's all done. And then this bike is finished and then we're on to this bike to get this out of here i like to get uh i need to get at least three bikes done this weekend so i'm doing the easiest ones first that's this one and this one and this one right here has a um oh what you call it there a uh a stripped out spark plug hole so i'm gonna show you guys how to address that all right guys well thank you once again for watching and hanging out with me i will talk to you guys later i'm out